All right, moving right along. We are welcoming computer scientists as well as mathematicians today. And here is uh, someone who's been delving deep into computers for many, many years, Edward Haynes. Good evening and thank you, Phil. Okay. Right. I have been a database professional now for a very long time and I've been on a journey now for over 15 years in terms of being a database developer with a passion for optimising database queries. This is at the heart of who I am and what I do. What I'd like to share with you tonight is aspects of that journey where I've been developing techniques to really improve the performance of database queries. But at the same time, I'm not going to share any database code. I'm not going to bore you with that kind of technical detail. What I am going to share with you is an appreciation for uh, using left field thinking. So I'm going to share some abstraction techniques and behavioral visualization techniques. And even if you're not really engaged or interested in database systems, hopefully you may be able to take something away from this tonight that helps you look at complex systems and solve complex problems in ways that maybe you hadn't thought of before. So, given that, I'd like to jump into my first abstraction visualization, which is my representation of a database system. <laughs> you could think of a database engine as a bit of a grey area, and what I'd like to do is point your attention to all the coins here. In a database system, you'll have many queries running, quite potentially. It can be a complex system, and it's quite typical to think of a database system as running queries in a transactional manner as they run their way through. The database system has to share all these resources and make them available in such a way that everything balances out and runs smoothly. So it's a very complex system. And what we're doing is taking one of these queries, represented by a coin, and I just want to use abstraction on that to say, okay, well, we have a query, it's got two sides to it, a head and tail. So, fundamentally, if I take a query and say, what are the two most important facets of that query, I would have to say that it's workload and throughput. And that gets down to the most fundamental aspect of a query. Moving on to abstraction number two. <laughs> Cats refer to this as pausality. <laughs> what I'm interested in is really representing all the, the causal effect on water so that what is it that's creating the wave pattern or the displacement pattern and having a closer look at that pattern in full of, in fullness. What I'd like to do in this example is using abstraction and visualization, think of a query as a boat. Now you can have two different types of boats in this example. One is really load bearing and really slow. And then you have another boat. It is of a, a smaller design, so it doesn't have the same load bearing characteristics. It's faster, and both of them are producing very different wave patterns, very unique displacement patterns. And this is important because in the world of the virtual, you don't necessarily think of these shapes taking place. But if you really think about it, a, a database query, as it moves its way through a database system, it's engaging with a very complex array of many, many facets, and those interactions are going to have a unique signature and that's really the point I'm trying to make. So if we join uh, the two previous abstractions into a diagram, I can say, well, you've got your database query with your workload and your throughput, and then the journey of that database query through the, its environment is going to create its signature, is going to create that displacement pattern which is representative of its, its workload, its load-bearing characteristics, and its speed or its efficiency overall. Hidden shapes. Now, these previous two abstractions, I've been referring to real-world examples. So I'm drawing upon known quantities of behavior and 
really building on a kind of a, a framework of understanding which I can extrapolate upon. The thing with hidden shapes that I'm trying to get to here is that once you start incorporating paradigms like that, you can start extrapolating further and saying, well, in these real world examples, I know of all these particular types of behaviours, do they or can they apply in the world of the virtual, in, the, in this case, in the world of the database system? So firstly, I'd like to bring your attention to the concept of a shape. Now, I'm boiling down a computer system or a server just down to four basic characteristics. Now, you can have, a server is very complex, but we'll just talk in terms of RAM, disk, network, and CPU. And when the query runs through to completion, what I'm depicting here is that it has a particular footprint and a small query, small processing overheads is going to have a smaller shape, a larger one, a larger footprint. And then I can move into a more complex diagram where I'm bringing kind of a synthesis again of what I've looked at before. Now, I, I work in SQL Server, which is why I have mentioned SQL Server up here, but typically in any database system or other complex data um, computerized system, you're going to have this virtual world, and so the circle represents the, the pool of resources, and you have two queries here, one in red, which is drawing heavily on disk. Now that's representing, that's kind of like the barge that I showed you earlier, it's, it's really load bearing, it's slow, and disk, I can state as a matter of fact, is just magnitude slower than RAM. It's like walking somewhere versus driving somewhere. And the other query has its own unique shape or footprint. It's green, it's sitting more in RAM, it's a lot faster, it's smaller, it's, it's more like that other boat that I showed you earlier. The, the, one of the key things I really want to point out here is, and I've done this many times in the past, is I've taken a query and I've redesigned it so that it generates exactly the same result, but I've shifted it from the red shape to the green shape, and that is possible. So bringing it all together, I'd like to introduce you to something else that I call query shaping. This is something that is fair, really quite new in the industry. If, in terms of what I'm talking about, you probably haven't heard anybody else talk about it, because I'm using very left field mythology, methodology to build these uh, techniques. And what I want to do is talk about bringing these abstractions together in a very hurried manner. Um, so I've got up here workload and throughput. So there's your currency, there's your database query. And if you come across the top, I've broken it down into four categories. That's your wave pattern or your displacement pattern that characterizes the behavior of that workload and throughput. And then I ask myself, okay, well, what can impact workload and throughput? And it's not an exhaustive list, but I have query complexity, index coverage, and sorting, and they all impact on workload and throughput. So, if I go into the next slide here, I have one graph, and what I'm doing here is I'm depicting query complexity against data load. Now, as query complexity goes up, typically, not necessarily every time, but generally speaking, the data load will go up as well, which is why in this general shape pattern that I have, I've got a red tip, which shows you your least performant characteristic, and as query complexity comes down, you have a more performant or more efficient characteristic. And which brings me to my final slide, where I can fill out this matrix into a synergistic dis demonstration of performance and behavioral representation of these three abstractions. At the same time, what I'm doing is grounding it back in some, into some technical categories so I can build a framework. And so what I've done is I've represented the wave patterns or the displacement patterns, the behavior of that workload and throughput against things that can really impact that workload and throughput. And this provides a map in terms of how those queries are going to behave dependent on various features. Like for example, one more, um, sorting. If the query is doing a lot of sorting work, then that is going to suddenly increase 
the, uh, the data load again, or it's going to, as the sorting goes up, it's going to reduce query responsiveness, for example, and these general behavior patterns are real. And what I've done over the last few years is built a series of techniques that tackle this paradigm of behavior so that I can actually deliberately re-engineer a query or design a query from scratch to manipulate behavior so that it pushes the behavior of the query into as far as possible into all this, the green peaks, thereby optimizing its performance. And that is what I call query shaping. Thank you.